Okay, Illinois basketball has a game on Friday that suddenly is a lot different than it looked 24 hours ago. Uh, they are playing Fairleigh Dickinson, who everyone knows is uh, the infamous underdog Cinderella that was able to take down Purdue in the NCAA tournament as a 16 seed last year. Different coach, different personnel this year for the Knights. Jack Hasselberry is in. This FDU team is bad. They're 6-7 and seven on the season. Um, look, we are going to talk about what the loss of Taryn Shannon means for Illinois basketball in this video. If you want our thoughts, our reaction to the Taryn Shannon incident itself, we have a different video on the channel. Again, th this whole thing is yucky to me. I'm going to say something I said at the top of the other video, but um, we love to talk Illinois basketball. We pride ourselves on doing as good of a job as anyone that covers Illinois basketball with reactionary content with analysis with all of it that means the good and the bad for the program on and off the court i certainly wish we weren't talking about this today i also don't think there's a way to do an illinois fairly dickinson preview that doesn't directly talk about terrence shannon's rape allegations so that's why we made a video specifically about the charges that's why in this video, we're going to keep it specific to what does it mean for Illinois basketball. If you watch one without the other, I think you could honestly interpret either of them as insensitive. So I, I hope nobody interprets that as insensitive. Where, where this is coming from, from our standpoint, is we just want to cover this as truthfully and as fairly as we can. Um, and last thing I would add, it, there's going to be a much different tone to this. Like I, There just is. The reality of this situation is that it is serious enough the Carter and I aren't allowed to make real housewives of champagne jokes anymore. And in essence, that's probably going to make these videos a less entertaining watch, but it is what it is until we get to a point where we feel comfortable doing that again. Um, just keep that in mind. We're, we're trying to do this the best we can, and it's probably going to look and feel and sound a little bit different. So uh, cart Illinois on the court against Fairleigh Dickinson, the Illinois we've seen this season, I don't think would have had anything to worry about in this game. I don't care who they're playing your first game without your best player and a player that's that important to the team as Terrence Shannon is, you're going to have issues. Like they could play your men's league opponents and there's going to be issues in this game. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. I, I, I just had, it's just, it, no matter what the opponent, like you said, because of the loss of your best player, the loss of your best player in the matter that it, that, that it has occurred, which we've spoken on, um and just that hanging over the program i just at times like this i always fall back on it's just really hard to focus on basketball during that time and i think that the players can come into this game and be like let's use this opportunity like basketball is our outlet let's just have 40 minutes of just basketball we don't have to worry about anything else but it's it's something that i think is going to be in the back of their mind look for us personally, it would be really easy. For, and I know I don't want to repeat this, um, but I do, I wanted to add on to what you said to start this, Greg. Me personally, the way I feel, it's not – I don't feel as comfortable talking about basketball with the allegations that are out there with Terrence Shannon. But with that said, because we consistently talk about Illinois basketball, you know, I, I actually do feel a duty to discuss – Illinois basketball which is why we are still doing this preview but like you said also you can't talk about Illinois basketball without what the impact of Terrence Shannon Jr. was to this program on the court and what he was was their do everything first team all-american player they are going to be without him and also they're going to have the allegations of what he has done hanging over his head so that is going to in in turn to me affect the basketball team now Will that affect them to the tone of their losing basketball games? I, I don't know. I don't think this is one of those basketball games. Like you stated, I just think that Fairleigh Dickinson isn't that great of a basketball team. And when you go to the players on the court for Illinois, every single player that will be playing for Illinois in this game, I think is better than the player on Fairleigh Dickinson. As you go one by one, I think they got a better coach. I think they got better players, talent, whatever word you want to use. So, is it going to be a very weird game? It probably is going to be a weird game given the situation and the, and the circumstances. But I do think that Illinois basketball will come out on the winning side of this as far as being able to beat Fairleigh Dickinson.
yeah, maybe there's a galvanizing effect. You never know. Um, just profile-wise, Fairleigh Dickinson, one of the worst defenses in the country. They're ranked 358th in adjusted defensive efficiency on Kempom. They play extremely fast, 26th fastest tempo. They shoot the ball horribly from all over the court, from the free throw line. There is not much to like about this team at all. They give up a bunch of three-point attempts. Um, yeah, it, Illinois has currently constructed prior to the Terrence Shannon news. Um, I think loves their chances in this game. They're 32 point favorites on Ken Palm. I think you still love your chances. I don't think there's any reason to think Illinois won't win this game. I do think there's a lot of curious elements to this of like how are individual players going to adjust in a role where they're now in a much different role. Like Marcus Damask is going to be asked to do a lot more on ball in this game than he's had to do with Terrence Shannon. Coleman Hawkins is going to get opportunities as the quote unquote alpha of this team in a way that would not have happened if Terrence Shannon is there. I think the point guard issues that we've talked about that haven't really been issues this season suddenly become issues when you take away the player who needs to have the ball in his hands a ton. This is probably a big spot for Ty Rogers. This could be a big game for Justin Harmon or DGL off the bench where they get a larger opportunity than they would normally get. Um, of all the players I just mentioned, or even players I didn't mention, who are you most curious to keep an eye on this game of of maybe a new role or they show you something or they get an opportunity they wouldn't normally get? I think it, that's a twofold question for me because the players that I look to that might have more of an opportunity are the Harmons and the DGLs. Like, I think those are the two ones that that pop out to me. But who I think needs to step up both on the court and as far as just keeping this team together, I think it's Coleman Hawkins. And that scares me to be honest with you because I love Coleman. I do, but nothing he has done or exuberated throughout his Illinois career has struck me as a leader. And that's not, that's not a negative either, by the way, like not every player is a leader. Um, they, Coleman just didn't have to be that because there was other players on the team that could lead or assert themselves. So I, I think it has to be Coleman. Um, I think that Coleman has played a lot of basketball and I think that Coleman has the ability also to step up because like you said, I love Damask in the quote unquote Robin role. Damask in the Batman main guy role scares me. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think that Coleman should, should be that guy. Is it crazy to say that I think Damask scares me less as Batman than Coleman Hawkins does? Oh, oh, uh, no, that's not. I think I agree with you. I, I think Coleman's just the Joker. Like, I I think, like, there's both, the, both like, both like in terms of being a villain and like actually being a jokester. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's an iconic one, right? Like, he's, he's great at what he does, but I, I don't think you can have Heath Ledger play Batman and it works. Like, I just, I think like Coleman would definitely hit a, like, you want to know how I got these scars? Like, yeah, that's definitely a that's, Coleman line. That's Coleman. Uh, Damask, uh, to me, he's always operated more as the Harvey Dent of this team, but could he step in? Could he play? I, I think he probably could. Um, who is DGL? I know we said we're not like now, now you're, now we're just doing like, yeah, now we're back to us. This see, it only took us ten minutes to overcome this, and we can't help ourselves. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like a, like a role player. Like, there's not a lot of like bit like an extra. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I I haven't watched Batman in a while, but I gotta refresh on that. But yeah, I it's uh, it's gonna take it's it's gonna take players stepping up and i don't even like it's i hate even talking about like stepping up because we're acting like terrence shannon went out with a sprained ankle and guys are going to get an opportunity now like it's just uh, it, this sucks i have two guys no three guys sorry i have three people that i am fixated on mentally for this game to see what happens um and arguably i guess you could say excited to see what happens from these three the first one is ty rogers Ty Rogers, I think, has gotten extremely comfortable in the, oh, you just bring the ball up and do all the little things and play off a superstar. What does Ty Rogers look like from a team that wants him to do more than that? Or do they still want him to just do that? But now somebody's trying to pretend they're Terrence Shannon is not Terrence Shannon. Like, I, I honestly think Ty is capable of more, a little more than he's been asked to do this year. And I'm very curious, like if, if Illinois wants Ty Rogers to go get eight assists in a game instead of four or to attempt shots, what does that look like? Can they play through him as a scorer in the post a little more? I think against Fairleigh Dickinson, you can because they're a horrible defense that gets up and down. Um, 
So in a, in a weird way, I think we could see Ty Rogers look a lot different than we've ever seen him. The second guy for me is Dre Gibbs Lawhorn. Um, look, call it whatever you want to call it. Terrence is one of one as a shot creator. He's the, you just knew he was going to bully his way to the rim and get whatever he wants. And there was 20 shots a game coming from that person. I don't think Illinois has a lot of other shot creators. I just don't think they do. Like, I, I think they worked off of all of Terrence Shannon's action. You remove that action. I don't think Marcus Damas carries that type of gravity with the ball. Gary A certainly doesn't. Those guys have to be off ball guys that help or contribute in a secondary way. Coleman Hawkins, you can try to run it all through him. I think you're going to get disastrous results. At bare minimum, it might be ugly, but at bare minimum, DGL – is a guy that you know you can give the ball to, and he's going to make action happen. Whether that's scoring for himself or whether that's get to the rim, whether it's the other guys feed off of his creation. I think you have to see him in a larger role. I think it's timely because we are turning the calendar to January in three days. And uh, if you haven't noticed, the Gibbs Lawhorns family's happy tweets have about tripled in the last week, Cart. There's a lot of... uh, Hey, just want you to know I'm hashtag the happiest I've ever been going on from everyone yeah. in the Gibbs Lawhorn family. So uh big opportunity there potentially. It's also timely because you don't got to throw them into the fire. Like you don't got to throw them to the wolves of Mackie and, and like net, we need you to, we need 25 minutes out of you at Mackie against the guards from Purdue against Zach Eady in like the biggest game of the season up to date. You know, DGL can get his verse fairly Dickinson and he can get some confidence. He can play well. I think that will go a long way because with the outlook of Illinois as a basketball program now, there's going there is a massive void uh, in the team. Um, and there we talk about the depth that Illinois has. Well, it's time to see that depth and see who, uh, you know, can step up to match the production that is no longer there. Yeah. Uh, My third person. Sorry. I said I have three people I want to keep an eye on here. Brad Underwood himself. Um, Brad, I think, has been the best coach in the country to this point in the season. I think what Brad has done with this team has been impeccable. I think the locker room love is real. I think everybody involved in this was as happy as they have ever been he had sincere harrison red shirting and it made everybody happier and better he's just navigated everything flawlessly obviously the in-game stuff's been great we know that brad is a fiery guy uh we've seen clips of his fire going the wrong way in the past where you know not saying he's doing anything wrong but the players clearly aren't interpreting brad's fire the way that they need to This is now a challenge for Brad Underwood that no coach should ever have to figure out how to manage. But, you know, sometimes shit happens that you don't expect when you are in a position like being a division one head basketball coach at a program like Illinois, like this, this isn't the first time a coach has had to navigate a player being charged with rape. Bill self had to do it this summer. It's sad that it happens, but it's happened. What fascinates me is, is everything was going so right for Brad. What does he do now? Like if if you're a player in that locker room and you're Brad, do you coach this team the same way you would have 48 hours ago? Like, can you even be the fiery guy that you would normally be? Like if they find themselves down one point to Fairleigh Dickinson 10 minutes into this game, can Brad even like get into them and light the fire that he would normally do given the way everybody's probably emotionally trained with this? I don't know. I think this is... Look, Brad has had some tough jobs he's had to figure out. He has had some tough situations to navigate in the last 36 months as the coach of this program. This is by far the toughest thing that Brad Underwood will have to figure out for his basketball program. And I am just so curious how it's going to go. I'm curious when he's going to get in front of a microphone, but more curious in the game. How is Brad Underwood going to handle this? Because it's going to be tough, I think. He's going to have to find some answers, and we'll see. Yeah, and I think it's going to have to be different, unfortunately. It, it, I, I just don't think you can ignore that, and I don't think that you can. Uh, part of being a coach, I think, is being aware of I, – I, I use the phrase of different players need to be coached differently. Um, 
it's a different team landscape, obviously now in a whole different situation um, that at least to my knowledge, I don't know if Brad has ever had to navigate. Like, I'm not sure if like he's had any situations like this in his coaching career. Um, and I'm also not here to be like, this is a coach who I'd, you know, I trust to do the right thing. And, you know, all that, uh, all the, all the other maybe phrases you want to say about that. But uh, it, it, I think everyone is going to be kind of under, under watch or under a microscope to see how they how they navigate this and play basketball uh, with stuff like this going on. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I just, I feel so bad for him in general. I feel for everyone involved in the situation clearly, but I, I feel the worst for the victim. I feel from an Illinois basketball perspective, I feel the worst of Brad Underwood finally getting a locker room that he loved so much. Like the the fact that it, he couldn't rush quick enough to tell you how great this team was and how great the chemistry was for them to now have to overcome this from the best player in the room is just sickening. It's sickening right. to have to from, watch from the, from the quote unquote, like you said, best person, like the, this is the last person, like we said that we thought that, you know, this would happen to now that doesn't mean anything, but it's just like, uh, it couldn't be more of a saddening bombshell. I think we'll ask some serious questions about the future of this team after this game. I'm going to resist asking some that I want to ask right now, like success wise, where this team land up. But I just want to say this. If Brad Underwood finishes this season similar, like on a path to where we thought this team was headed with Shannon, without Shannon, coach of the year, like no, no question asked. And I don't, I don't even think that that's impossible either. Like I, I genuinely think Brad still has enough basketball wise. And maybe the fact that this locker room has liked each other enough could be the thing that galvanizes them together here. Even Um, I'm not going to speculate, but I just, I won't be shocked if Illinois, at least in this game looks like they don't skip a beat. And then you see what happens when they host Northwestern uh, at the beginning of next week. So, all right. Um, We always end this with a prediction. Kempom has Illinois by 32. What's your prediction for this game? What's the final score? I think Illinois wins by 20, 21 points. Um, I think the score is, uh, to, let's call it 79-59. I like Illinois to win comfortably. I like the under. That's where I'm at. Uh, depending on what the betting line comes out of this, this might absolutely be a circle it and bet it by default play. So, um, all right, hang in there, Illinois fans. We'll be here every step of the way.